Five Americans are back in the United States after being held in Iranian custody. Almost 200 state employees in Illinois are accused of fraud in the Paycheck Protection Program. And Democrats in Iowa plan to hold an early caucus, sort of. We'll cover that this morning with former Rock Island County Republican Party Chair Drew Milkey and former Rock Island Mayor Mark Schwiebert, a Democrat. Great to see you both. Let's we'll start right away in Iowa where the Democratic Party scheduled its caucuses. They will be January 15th and that coincides with the Republican Party schedule. There is a difference though. Republicans will be participating in the presidential nominating process. Democrats won't. They'll be picking delegates for county conventions, but not indicate any presidential preferences, despite the fact that Joe Biden is facing some challenges. Uh, Democrats will do that by mail over the objection of Republicans and against state law that requires caucus participation to be in person. Now, the Democratic National Committee stripped Iowa of its first in the nation status. The DNC also told New Hampshire it can't be the first primary, but New Hampshire isn't caving into the party. So how much is this a cop out by Democrats in Iowa? Why not keep up with tradition and see what the consequences are later? Mark? Well, I think what's happened is that there has been a realization that uh, Iowa doesn't exactly represent the diversity of the U.S. population. And as a result of that, there's been a determination made that uh, the first in the nation uh, decision as to or determination as to who the presidential candidate should be should perhaps be decided by uh, a state or a portion of the nation that is more representative. I think that some of the things that have been happening in Iowa in recent years uh, indicate a rightward drift that is uh, uh, somewhat askance of the national sentiment on issues like reproductive choice, public education, a number of other areas, and that's probably a further factor that's uh, prompted the decision by the D Democratic National Committee to start looking at another location to give the first read on what the attitude is towards who our next president should be. Drew, do you think this is a cop-out by Iowa Democrats? You know, we had the, the 2020 Democratic Iowa Convent, uh, Caucus was a fiasco with reporting issues. And then they were, this time, they're waiting, the ha Democrats are waiting for the Republicans to announce what day they're having it on. And then they're having it on the same day. But it's it, like you said, Jim, it's a mail-in uh, ballot for presidential candidates. I, if I were RFK Jr., I would, I would be upset, but I've not heard him say anything about it. And as far as diversity in the state of Iowa, I think Iowa is a diverse state. But you know what? Really, what it tells me is that they're silencing Iowa's first status, and I don't like that. Um, what What's changed now that made Iowa all of a sudden uh, for the Democrats? Uh, not an important state. Uh, I, I don't agree with that at all. I'm not a Democrat, but if I, but if I lived in Iowa when I were, I, I, would, I, would, I would be upset with the DNC for, for kind of smacking Iowa aside. I have checked the demographics of Iowa. Actually, the diversity does stack up with the United States as a whole. It doesn't stack up with the Democratic Party's diversity makeup. Let's move okay. to Illinois. The Chicago Sun-Times reports the state's executive inspector general maintains 177 state employees broke the law by defrauding the federal government, specifically by taking advantage of the Paycheck Protection Program set up during the pandemic to help businesses survive the crisis. Nobody charged with a crime in this so far, but the impression is prosecution is looming while the investigation continues. The Sun-Times reports 132 of them worked for the Illinois Department of Human Services alone. Dozens of employees at one facility in Park Forest quit or got fired because of it. This program was vulnerable to fraud across the country, not just Illinois, but the involvement of state employees certainly strikes the chord. How much of a setback is this for Illinois trying to build some faith in the state government? Drew, both of you are from Illinois, but Drew, I'll give you the first crack at this time. Well, you know, this just confirms that Illinois is still sick and corrupt at higher, at all levels. Uh, it's there, it's not being checked. Well, it is being checked now, thanks, thankfully. Uh, but this isn't just Illinois. This is across the nation to the tune of $200 billion of suspicious funds that are perhaps uh, like, and there has been indictments. Uh, federal postal workers are being indicted right now in central Illinois. And, uh, you know, this is, this is money that was from the CARES Act, and I'm glad that someone is checking this. But, yeah, it's, it's giving, first of all, it's giving every state in the Union a black eye. It's not just Illinois. I have to, I have to point that out. But, um, you know, we have uh, workers that are, it doesn't matter who they are, if they're state workers or who they are, frauding the federal government, it needs to be pursued because it's, it's our money. Mark, is it just me or does it seem worse because state employees are doing this? 
Well, I think it, it, it does reflect a breach of trust. In fact, the uh, office of the uh, executive inspector general that's initiated the investigation uh, and has identified these uh, over 200 instances of fraud uh, has, has pointed out how this is particularly offensive because it's a breach of trust on the part of public people, pe people who are supposed to be serving the public. Um, I do agree with Drew that this is, and, and as you said before, Jim, this is not a, a localized problem to Illinois, certainly. It's a national problem that there have been people who've taken advantage of a situation where there have been some who've been truly harmed to try to enrich themselves and do some pretty outrageous things. I'm glad that uh, the state of Illinois is going after these people and that criminal prosecutions are going to be initiated should be, as should restitution for the money that's been wrongfully obtained to the extent that that can be recovered. This kind of conduct is unacceptable and uh, it certainly shouldn't be condoned by anybody who's a, a, a public official or an office holder and, and so I, I commend the state for going after these people and discharging them. Drew Milkey, Mark Schwieber, stand by. Still to come, Iran's swap. What concern there is about the deal to bring five Americans back to the United States. For the record.